No, we're leading the Yukoba series at the moment. You're leading? Yeah. So if we can get a, a good first, second or third on Sunday, hopefully we'll become Yukoba champions. So that's the plan for this weekend. First three in that one. I reckon you got a half and half race. Yeah. Right, you got half a cat like. race and half a mono race. Mm. So I think it's anyone place at the moment. Mm. It's about eight boats. So it's going to be spectacular win. when they come back in from the dolphin to the pier and old Harry. Be yeah, because it's going to be lumpy there, isn't it? Mm. On that leg going down. Yeah. It's going to be just like the wheels last year. Mm. A nightmare. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> yeah, well, I like to see him cause the crowd a bit of excitement. Yeah. Mm. Harley. Welcome to the United Kingdom Offshore Boating Association Provincial Bournemouth Powerboat Festival held between the 16th and 21st of September 1986, sponsored by Prudential Unit Trust Managers Limited and supported by the Bournemouth Department of Tourism and Publicity. The first job a driver has to do is to sign on with race control, something occasionally they do tend to forget. The boats have to be scrutineered prior to competing in the race to ensure that they conform to the rules and standards laid down for their particular classes. You have you check the safety equipment. What has every boat got to carry? Uh, anchor, first aid kit, flares, compasses, fire extinguishers. Uh, most equipment, so if they get into bother, they can get themselves out while they're waiting for help. Uh, life jackets. Make sure they're in good condition. Uh, crash hats, make sure that uh, the straps are alright. And then make sure the seats and the steering are all okay. Life jackets. Do you want to get some um, stuff for the boys? Checking the ratio, um, we're turning the flywheel and checking the propeller to see, make sure it's the correct ratio. Uh, two to one. What else are you looking for in the scrutineering apart from the engine? Checking the carburetor numbers, uh, powerhead numbers against the casting marks to make sure they're the right engines.
Unfortunately, scrutineering doesn't always go smoothly. I think that's what we'll do. Yeah. Make another Okay, we'll do that. Yeah. Would be a good one, we don't quite know what the difference is on the casting numbers between the two engines at the moment. The difference is whether he can run or whether he can be disqualified because he's running an out of class engine. They've uprated it now from the old 175. They've made it all injection, which is now putting out 2.3 litres, which is over out of class because these are all two litre engines. So we've got to find out and get our facts right before, in case anything goes wrong. It was uh, with one of the foreign competitors. Um, apparently it might be a, a new version that's 2.3 litres and the class limit's 2 litres. Uh, so we'll have to see. Yes, yes. See if it goes now. And these are washed now. Signing on at the briefing is the next step. It is essential that all crews attend the briefing prior to the race. These briefings are to ensure that all boats are familiar with the course, aware of all navigational hazards, and are fully conversant with the safety procedures. How long is this one here? This particular was meeting was held in the pier approach show bar. When there will be more marshals present. The crews also I take this opportunity to discuss please, the following day's racing and catch up with the latest gossip with their friends. Strictly adhered to. The Officer of the day, Reg Turner, gave details of the course the boats had to follow. The Included were a few new additions to these waters. Within the race area, there were an offshore drilling platform, which had a no-go area around it, a diving support vessel at an ancient wreck site, and an oil pollution control vessel testing a new type of containment boom. Make sure that it isn't the diving boat, and that'll give you a clue that you're off course anyway. But it shouldn't have a thing to notice... A representative a of Her Majesty's vessel. Coast Guards also Not gave details sure. of navigational hazards new to these waters not on the charts, and the UIM delegate, Viv Williams, unveiled the new... Prudential Unit Trust Manager's emblem, Prudence, which was launched in conjunction with the Powerboat Festival. the boats took place at the Pool Harbour Yacht Club, with last-minute preparations and adjustments being made by some of the crews. The Italian crew of Maze Generators took the opportunity afforded by a launching train to raise their engine in an effort to gain more speed. These sole Italian competitors had driven all the way from their Mediterranean home in order to run in the race. Incidentally, the world finals had been run in Sardinia a few weeks earlier. Yes. Can you hear the 83 mile an hour on it, are you? <laughs> but I've been trying to find the 83. So have I. You have. I have yeah. too. Yeah. Mind you, it's 4.45, isn't it? So 
think it's going to be rough on those yeah. awkward legs. Very rough. So you thing. want a bit of punch, so. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't this the most agonising decision you've got to make? On a day like today. Of course it isn't. Think positive, isn't it? Take that one. I would. I would too, I think. Yeah. That is an animal, this thing. But we'll put it on. No, not to that extent. So what have you finally decided to run on? I decided to run a, a 14 and a half 26 propeller, QSS. Which, uh, like Peter says, is if it's flat, um, it'll go like a train, and if um, if it's rough, I think I've probably screwed it up. <laughs> yeah, there's a yellow and The boat's going out on that outward leg should be heading to the right of the oil rig. The fastest half of the fleet have gone far too far to the left. The second half of the fleet have realised the mistake they're going to the right mark. And eventually, the front runners will have to turn and go right over in this direction. And they're probably half a mile to a mile off the foot.
see towards where the Optica spotting plane is at this moment. Throughout the race, safety control kept a very close watch on the exact whereabouts of all boats with their pin board. Meanwhile, the timekeepers were hard at work logging the competitors through the control point. Unfortunately for some, like maze generators, retirement was forced upon them.
Garland goes to Michael Froda, ladies and gentlemen. What about and of course, a bottle of Cordon Rouge Mum Champagne. Uh, a garland also to the English navigator, Graham Stewart. They uh, really did magnificently. They were leading the race and eventually finished, eventually finished in third place. They are Dave Trotter and Steve Lajoie from Guernsey in Magician 3. Campaign. Dave Trotter, the driver, shakes the hands of Lord Normanton and the uh, Mayor of Bournemouth. <laughs> I think it's a case for discharging uh, champagne corks again, and uh, it's nice to see the splendid spirit of cooperation and uh, uh, friendliness that exists uh, between the various groups as they shake hands and uh, celebrate their individual successes. Let me have a word, if I may, with Michael Froda. Uh, because really uh, he is the man of the day and it would be nice to find out just how he feels about it. And more champagne is drunk. May I have... We asked Alistair McNulty of Pride of De Vere what happened in the race. The prop shaft and the propeller snapped off just after the um, bearing carrier propeller disappeared into the ocean and uh, that was the end of that. No drop left. Who went the right way when a lot of people went the wrong way? Well, we went the right way in the end. We were heading the wrong way, but uh, we looked over to the right and saw about 30 boats all going over to the right and assumed that we must be wrong. So, yes, we uh, were lucky enough that we were this side of the oil rig to put ourselves right, yeah. We got it right and uh, the first four boats had all disappeared into the distance. So. Yeah, but you managed to come out to what, about second place? We were second place when the shaft went here. You haven't had an awful lot of luck just in the last few races, have you? Uh, that's an understatement, yeah. I mean, gearbox, we have four gearboxes now in four races, so uh, yes, not a lot of luck is probably a good way to describe it. I've got stronger words, really, but uh, <laughs> one of these things. So where do you go from here with the gearbox? We'll have a new solid piece shaft put in for Sunday's race. Um, get over a prop from somewhere. Go and give it a crack Sunday. We've, we're leading New Cobra Championship, so we've really got to be there Sunday and go all out for it. Just keep our fingers crossed that perhaps it doesn't break down this time. How far are you ahead uh, in the New Cobra Championship? Seven at the points. Seven points. And uh, what's it for first? Um, it'll probably be somewhere around 19 to 20 points for first place, depending on the number of boats that start, but 19 to 20 points on Sunday. It's going to be very tight. Who's, who's your nearest challenger? Uh, Steve Bourne in... Uh, Newtex and John Yeoman and Hooper and Ashby, they're both on 39. So you, you've got to do well, haven't you? Well, we've got to do well, we've got to keep them in our sights. Well, good luck for Sunday. Thank you. Let's, yeah. I, I hope it holds together this time. <laughs> so do I. Good luck. Another of the Lawn Campbell designed catamarans built for him by Gordon Wright from the same stable as Pride of De Vere and Power Prime is Langan's Brasserie crewed by Joe and Pete Marenghi. Unfortunately, Joe Marenghi was feeling rather disconsolate having finished by his standards a very poor provisional 11th place. <laughs> I mean, if you did it again, would you alter the settings, do you think? It's got to be on the right. Do we let it do well on the left of it? No. No, we'd have to get our finger out and practice with that bow tank. That's what we must do. That's all it, all it boils down to, really. I mean, it's just it's actually finding the time off from work <laughs> to do things like that. So. Still, hopefully, it's uh, we'll give it a go on Sunday in the Yukova race. You were talking to us this morning about um, your choice of flywheel cum propeller. Do you reckon you were right? Yes, I do. Yeah, it was very, it was very good. Sorry. Oh, you missed it. He just had a moony there. <laughs> yeah, it was king great. Yeah. <laughs> so you came what second? Um, yes, I came second today. Yeah, it's a good yeah. race. Enjoyed it very much. Um, it was really, really rough offshore, and uh, I chose the right propeller, had the right flywheel on, and everything went well. Good navigation. Uh, you, know. you went the right side round the orb. Um, yes, we did, fortunately. <laughs> yes, we did. We we were in the leading pack of four, 
and we um, we followed them, which is a classic mistake. And we caught we, we saw we saw them go wrong, but we'd already gone wrong by maybe a mile, mile and a half by then. And when we turned over to go the right side of the oil rig, we saw three or four come inside us. Uh, but unfortunately, we still came back in in the fourth place, which we were with the other pack. And when we went round the actual boy in the end, we were fourth. And throughout the race then, we just started to work our way through. Fortunately, got Dave Trotter on the last lap. And uh, we just couldn't catch Michael Frode. He's just too quick. Excellent driver, as is Dave Trotter. Um, good, good, good race. Good result. Well pleased. Yeah. Um, what about Sunday? You racing? Yeah, go race, race hard Sunday. I can't win the British Championships, but I think I can come either second or third. Um, so I'll be going hard for it to come second or third. If you can't win, you have to have what's ever, what's, what's best. <laughs> Following the official scrutineering of Michael Froda's winning boat after the race, it became clear that the Mercury engine had been prepared according to standards different to those currently accepted in the UK. It was therefore decided to postpone the prize giving to permit a fuller examination of both the engine and its homologation papers. Due to the technical nature of the inspections, it was felt that the delay in the prize giving would prove the fairest way of permitting an equitable solution. The UCOBA president, Earl of Normanton, spoke a few words of thanks. I'd just like to say a very few words, mainly of thanks. Uh, firstly, very, very much to the Prudential Union Trust Managers Limited, who are our sponsors. And as you know, without them, there couldn't be a race. We couldn't um, get the thing together without a sponsor, and we thank them very, very much indeed. Secondly, I'd like to thank uh, Bournemouth uh, Town for their amazing support financially, and also after the Wells last year for actually having us back again. The Cool Harbour Yacht Club, who have extended the most incredible facilities to all of you racing, uh, launching boats, and scrutineering, and also this marvelous evening they've given us this evening. During the course of the evening, there were only two awards made. The first was the award of the Concourse d'Elegance, which went to Newtex, Steve Bourne and Tony Toll. And the second was a bouquet which was presented to the Earl of Normanton's wife. Thank you very much indeed. The false alarms are all over, are
Saturday saw some very exciting and extremely close competition from the offshore circuit racing craft, who, although the smallest, are in many ways the most exciting of the offshore boats. Absolutely magnificent it is. I know I've had the opportunity of going out in one or two of these past two days. Peter Clark, congratulations on uh, on winning in boat <laughs> E25, how does it feel? Very wet at the moment. Uh, no, it feels good, very good. It's been a very good uh, good race. Interesting water, good competition. It's hard work though. <laughs> it was uh, very calm water, does that suit you? Or? Well, I think really you've got to get used to all conditions. No good just being a calm racer. But although it was calm, um, there was a bit of a swell running. And the biggest problem were large cruisers that were um, coming across the course and every now and then you get three or four waves big ones and went really airborne and one stage I went up I didn't think I was coming back down it was, uh, went very high that must have been a bit tricky especially if you hit it coming into the chicane oh if you hit it coming into the chicane you won't come out of it you uh, flip but uh, no it's good race very good Roger in guardsman he gave me a very hard time P16 who's a uh, good driver he held me off for a very long time it was nip and tuck all the way until you managed to, uh, what's yeah. it called, getting inside? <laughs> it's what, tucking inside? Yeah. I tucked inside on him and uh, 
finally got through him on a chicane, but once I was clear, I got a slight boat speed advantage, but he's got better acceleration. But once I actually got ahead of him, I was OK. I was uh, pulled away from him quite easily. But he was a real tough man to get past. It was a good race. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, no, shit. <laughs> right, Jill F, congratulations on uh, coming first in your class. Um, do you find that there are many women in power boating? Or well, are you a bit of a minority? <laughs> it is a minority. There are a few, but uh, it is on the increase, I think. Yeah. Because you came to uh, power boating from water ski racing, didn't you? Yes, that's right. We've done water ski racing before. Well, we still do water ski racing as well, but now we're trying to hand a power boat racing as well. How did, it, how did you enjoy the race? It was fine, a bit too flat. It's, uh, you know, it's a bit better when it's a bit more lumpy out there. Had a few uh, spills to the race. <laughs> Following the OCR racing, a carnival atmosphere prevailed amongst the crews as a cavalcade of power boats with a bevy of beauties drove through the centre of Bournemouth. Which has got her glass skirt on? We asked John Yeoman for his feelings following the scrutineering and subsequent disqualification of Michael Froda's boat. Oh, I was a bit unfortunate about Michael Frode and his engine, but unfortunately I suppose that's the name of the game. But no, no disrespect to Michael, he's a good driver and uh, I feel sorry for him quite honestly, <laughs> but I'm glad I've won. And good team effort really, it's not just me, it's Kim, excellent bit of navigation, sent us all the right way. And uh, Joe Donahue, Gordon Wright, the rest of the team, excellent. It takes not just the driver and the navigator, there's a lot goes on behind the scenes that a lot of people don't realise. Of course, the sponsors. And uh, I'm just really, really pleased. Great event. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, and G stands for Graham. You're... I'm Brian. Yeah. You're... I take it you're brothers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you've just won the 1.3 litre. We chance. have indeed, yes. Uh, in Guernsey uh, this last week, uh, we're still uh, hanging over from our success, actually. It hasn't sunk in yet. Um, we've had a tremendous week at Guernsey and uh, fabulous racing. And I'm hoping to do well again here today, uh, tomorrow, because... Uh, <laughs> I am now leading the uh, national championship uh, because of the wins that we had in Guernsey, so uh, I'm hoping to get the double this time, and I believe that the double's not been done before, the world and the national together, so we're going full out to get the uh, title tomorrow. So you're hoping that your trip from Lancashire is going to be worth it? Oh yes, yeah. It's a long way to come, but I think it'll be worth it. We're very confident anyway. We're very confident. How's the uh, engine running well? The engine's running perfectly well. Uh, I was very fortunate that uh, Yamaha uh, took the engine off me after the Guernsey and they've completely rebuilt it uh, right up to brand new spec. It hasn't even been running yet and it's in tip-top condition. 
So you're going to be taking it a little steady so as not to... Uh, well, no, to no, I think we should be going straight out for it, right from the word go. We shall get it running in time, uh, no problem, I don't think. I think we should be going right <laughs> off the start, right to win, and stamp our position first. <laughs> John Yeoman was presented with this magnificent prize for being first British driver across the line. It was ironically presented by Michael Froda. It's the long and the short and the core blimey, I reckon, but... <laughs> Reg Turner presented a bouquet to retiring UCOBA secretary, Eddie Ireland. Before the big race on Sunday morning, a number of Prudential Unit Trust Managers VIPs were ferried from the Pool Harbour Yacht Club to Bournemouth Pier in a number of the participating race boats.
Sunday's race brought to an end the week's festivities of the Prudential Bournemouth Powerboat Festival and a tremendous season of powerboat racing and competition with Yukoba. Keen but friendly rivalry produced some fine competitive racing. Championships have been won and lost. Pride of De Vere with Alistair McNulty completed Sunday's race to clinch the British Yukoba Championship, despite his terrible run of bad luck. Brian and Graham Eastham of Kinnell Fire were the first to complete the double in the 1.3 litre class. We have all been able to admire the courage of Nicky Peck competing just a few days after coming out of hospital following a major operation. But perhaps this week will be remembered for highlighting the problems of running a European Championship. Let Brian Jones sum up how our feelings are regarding this matter. First across the line, there is a difference of interpretation between nations of the rules which are established. He is, I know, highly respected by you all as a powerboat racer and competitor, and I'm sure that you would wish that to be registered to Michael Froder, who's come all the way from Sweden tonight.